What is going on everyone? Welcome to another very exciting episode right here on the MI Gardener channel. In today's episode, we're doing part three of our Good Bug series. And in today's episode, we're gonna be covering one of my all time favorite beneficial insects in the garden. We're gonna talk about trichogramma. Let's go. Bad bugs, bad bugs, what you gonna do? What you gonna do when they come for you? Bad bugs, bad bugs. So when it comes to trichogramma, a lot of people don't really understand that name because it seems like a really complex scientific name, but I guarantee you, you've had them in your garden and they're also known as parasitic wasps. Now parasitic wasps, there's a lot of different kinds of parasitic wasps, but trichogramma parasitic wasps are one of the most prevalent and beneficial in the garden. Whether you have something like cabbage moths, those little white dainty little butterfly fairy looking moths that come and eat holes in your, in your uh, brassicas, or whether you have tomato hornworms, those big, green, huge, hefty, sausage-looking worms that have a big, mean horn on the back of them. Uh, people are often uh, really afraid of them, but they're totally harmless. But they will decimate a tomato patch. Or if you have tent caterpillars in things like your apple trees or your cherry trees, they'll make these huge nests that they'll basically, they'll have hundreds of these little uh, worms that will completely defoliate a cherry tree in a matter of a couple weeks. Or let's say, I mean, there's a whole list. Trichogramma can go through over 200 species of worms and caterpillars in the garden, and they're incredibly beneficial. So whether you have loopers, web worms, leaf worms, fruit worms, cut worms, bowl worms, army worms, tomato worms, corn worms, borers, gypsy moths, cuddling moths, the list goes on and on and on. These trichogrammas are so beneficial, and so we're gonna release them into our garden today. Now, there's a few things that you can do to help them stay alive, that's what we're gonna talk about, but we're also gonna talk about how to properly release them in your garden, because a lot of people, if they release them the wrong way, they're gonna find the effect to be muted, if not completely non-existent. Just like that, we're gonna give them a good cut. And now we have to just uh, run a string through and hang them on a tree. All right, so now we're just gonna take our card with our dormant eggs, and we're simply gonna tie it to a branch here on our apple tree. Now you could tie it anywhere in your garden. We're simply just tying it someplace that's gonna be uh, out of the way. And like I said, in about five days, these are gonna hatch and start to control all the nasties in our garden. So um, very, very simple to do. Nothing's too scientific about it. Just have it out there like that. Once they hatch, they're gonna start wreaking good havoc on your garden. You have wasps that, uh, that you know, they will be attracted to pollen or sugar. Like if you leave your lemonade out, you'll have wasps that come in for those things. These, these parasitic wasps have no interest whatso whatsoever in those things. All they're interested in is finding a mate and finding a host. Those two things, it's awesome because of that because you don't have to worry about anything else. They simply hatch. Once they hatch, they become an adult. They fly around, they find a mate, they do the dirty, they sting a host, which is like uh, a hornworm or a cabbage moth, things like that. They sting those, uh, those insects. They leave their eggs inside those insects. Those eggs will actually hatch inside of the moth or the caterpillar. And when they, when they uh, actually consume that host, they use it as a food source. They kill the host, which is what makes it a pest control method. And then once they hatch, they hatch, they find a mate, they do the dirty, and they sting something else. It's amazing for that because there's nothing else they really have to do. Now the adults only live for 14 days and so their, their life expectancy is very, very short. And that's why you typically wanna release them or encourage them to be in your garden when those hosts are actually around and alive. In super early season, when it's really cold out, it's gonna be pretty ineffective because of the fact that there's not really that many hosts for them to find. Now, uh, the other thing too, is if you're putting them in a pantry or you're putting them in a closet, you do have to release them on a weekly schedule uh, simply because of the fact that that's their food source, is you're trapping them inside of a, basically a glass jar with walls, right? There's no, there's, you know, there's the walls of your home do not allow them to go outside and find other hosts. So the moths that you're trying to kill in your pantry, pantry moths, or, uh, or like cotton moths that will eat your clothing, right? Those moths are on a life cycle 
And so you need to release them on a weekly basis, the trichogramma inside of those environments so that you don't miss that life cycle, right? You always wanna be releasing them. But outside in your garden, you have nothing to worry about. You simply release them, get them in good numbers, and they're gonna thrive. Now the final, final thing I wanted to mention is overwintering them because they can overwinter in many gardens, especially those that live in a, in a, uh, in a warmer climate or a, uh, or a higher growing zone. Um, you know, zone seven, eight, nine, um, even 10 through 12, uh, great zones for trichogramma to actually survive in because all they're doing is they're overwintering in leaf litter and debris. We always say that sometimes the messier garden is the healthier garden at the end of the season. And that applies to not only things like ladybugs, but also your trichogramma, your, your parasitic wasps. They will live in things like leaf litter. They'll, le they'll live in little nooks and crannies in your home, um, underneath the bark and trees. Any place that can buffer from those cold temperatures, they'll survive, they'll go dormant. And when spring comes, they're parasitic wasps again. They go find a mate, they do the deed, and then they sting something and the whole thing happens all over again. So they're a great insect to have in the garden. And I'm really happy that we're doing this series. I'm also happy that you guys are enjoying this series because though these are, um, you know, those, these, are, these are episodes that are typically a little shorter in length, people love them because they encourage that natural habitat in the garden. And so I always wanna kinda educate you guys on the how and the why of gardening and just try to be a little bit more organic in our approach to gardening. So I hope you guys enjoyed. I wanna thank Nature's Good Guys for uh, supplying us with these parasitic wasps here. And if you wanna see more of these good, guy ep uh, good bug episodes, make sure to comment uh, down below that you wanna see more of them and we'll keep them coming. So as always, this is Luke from the My Gardener channel reminding you to grow bigger. Take care guys.